Father, we honor God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. With your love, you saved us. With your power, you've raised us. With your blood, you've bathed us. With your mercy, you forgave us. And with your grace, we thank you for your new life more abundantly. Guide us today to give to you more cheerfully, obey you more willfully, serve you more skillfully, pray to you more cheerfully, and respect your commandments more fearfully. In the name of Jesus, amen. Let's go to the handout, and as we go to Proverbs 22 and 1, the word that the Lord has for you from the Amplified Bible today, it says, a good name. Somebody say good name. Good name. Earned by honorable behavior, godly wisdom, moral courage, and personal integrity, is more desirable than great riches. And favor is better than silver and gold. And as we go into word today, look at somebody and say a good name. And then after that, look at somebody and say, would you buy you? Now when I ask that question, I'm not talking about your reputation. We got a lot of folks that build a lot of their life based upon a reputation, but a reputation is who other people think you are, uh -huh. but your character is who you know and God knows yes. you really are. Yes. And the word tells you and I that of all the things about Jesus, Jesus made of himself no reputation. He wasn't concerned about what other people thought about him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He was only concerned about what the father thought about him. Yes, sir. He was only concerned with trying to be about his father's business and hearing the father say well done yes. when he was done. Yes. The greatest accusation against Jesus was this man eats and drinks with sinners. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. And if you're concerned about your reputation, you ain't going to be eating and you ain't going to be drinking with no sinners. You're going to be focused upon trying to please men and women as a people pleaser yes, sir. and not as a God pleaser. Yes, sir. But when you're focused upon your character and not your reputation, yes, the sir. character is the inward resolve to do what's right in God's sight at all times. And God wants his children to be people of character. People who know that we're here for a reason and we're here for a season to hear the Lord say, well done. So when I say, which I, by you, I ain't talking about your reputation, not your resume. How many of us have owned companies and gone on jobs and been in management and have seen people who present a beautiful resume? I mean, you look at this resume and these folks can walk on water based on the paper. <laughs> they can speak English and Spanish and, and, and they won this award and that award. And, and, they, and on paper, they look like they're the greatest thing since sliced bread. But how many of us know a lot of people stop looking for work as soon as they get the job? I asked a man one time, how many folks you got working for? You say, oh, about half of them. I asked the man, how long you been working for the company? He said, oh, ever since they threatened the farming. <laughs> so you can't be focused upon a resume. The real test is what you're going to do when you have the opportunity. When the going get tough, the tough get going and get growing and get sewing. Not your wrapping paper. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We got a lot of folks in our generation have put their total focus on wrapping paper yes, sir. and not the gift. And what we learned from the word of God, when God got ready to choose a new king, praise God, God told Samuel, when Samuel went to find the new king, David had several brothers who their father had brought to Samuel to select the king. And, and, and Samuel was looking through this brother and that brother and that brother, and finally he went through the last brother, and he says, are these all your sons? He said, yeah, but he thought about David, who was out in the field tending to the sheep. And he said, well, go get him. 
And they brought David in and he said, that's the one I'm choosing. God has chosen David because man looks on the outside, but God looks on the heart. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And God wants you to understand that in the world that we're living in today, where the world is focusing on wrapping paper. You've heard me teach on many occasions. You ask the person who's unlightened. I got somebody I want you to meet. And what's the first thing come out of their mouth? How do they look, Pastor? And how I've grown up to realize that how they look on the outside is not the real gift, praise God. The real gift is what's on the inside. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So God says it's not your wrapping paper. It's not your reputation. It's not your resume. The real you is not your representative. How many people have been in a relationship and you've been with that person for a long time, but you realize that the person that you met was the representative and not the real person? Yes, sir. Hey Amen. People love to ask you in relationships, especially when you're starting out. One of the questions that people love to ask you is, what do you like? And you know why they ask you, what do you like? Yes, sir. Because for a season, they're going to try to be what you like. Yes, sir. If you love the Lord, they say, well, let me go buy me some church dresses and give me some hats and learn how to say amen and give me a Bible. <laughs> And I'm going to portray myself to be a woman of God, a man of God, like you want. But how many know no person can consistently perform in a manner inconsistent with the way that they see themselves? Yes, sir. Because sooner or later, the real person is going to come out. Yes, sir, it is. If you don't love the Lord like your spouse loved the Lord, sooner or later, it's going to come out. Yes, sir. If you don't want to go to Bible study like your spouse wants to go to Bible study, sooner or later it's going to come out. Yes, sir, and God is asking today, would you buy you and let's stop pretending like we're somebody that we're not. Yes, sir. And focus on being the cursed person that God has called us to be. And that's why he tells you in the word today that a good name is worth more than any silver and gold. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And the money that millionaires leave their children can't pay the down payment on what a good name leaves with children. You got some people, praise God. Uh, I remember going down to my grandfather's hometown and, 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 and you go to the town and they tell you, you tell them what your last name is. And how much you ever face a situation to where somebody say, your money don't spend in this stove? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> I remember what your, what your grandfather did and I remember what he helped me to do. And, and praise God, good name can last from generation to generation. And yes, some of us are still being blessed on the good name that our parents and grandparents left for us. Yes, sir. And we need to treasure a good name. And God wants you as we're going into this season, y'all, to understand that when he bought you, he gave his son's life to save your life so that you could have new life. He gave you his name. I'm reminded of the story of the young man who grew up in Tennessee that didn't know who his father was. And yes, people really treated him bad. You know, sometimes people can really be, uh, uh, treat folks bad. Yes, sir. But he was in this store one day and he overheard these two ladies saying, did they ever find out who his daddy was? And it just broke his little heart. Yes, sir. But one day, a new pastor came to town. And this pastor was speaking life and not death. He was saying that you are a child of God. You are born to win. You are engineered with God's excellence. You are endowed with God's seeds of greatness. Why, you are somebody. Yes, sir. Yes, and he enjoyed the sermon so much he came back 
the next Sunday. Yes, sir. But when he came back the next Sunday, he got so caught up into the sermon, he forgot to leave early. And as soon as the church was over, he tried to run out before the people could see him, but there were some folks in front of him and behind him. And that young pastor ran down to catch him and said, whose child are you? And everybody in that little church turned around to see what he was going to say. And the pastor said, I know the resemblance is unmistakable. Why, you're God's child. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, that's a great heritage. And he swatted him on the behind and said, now go live up to it. And Bert Hooper said that was the day he became the governor of Tennessee. For the first time in his life, he saw himself as he really was a child of God. Do I have any of God's children in here who, no matter where you are right now, God created you in his own image and you were born to win. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You're engineered with God's excellence and you're endowed with his seeds of supernatural greatness. And God is expecting great things from all of his children. But the question is whose report? Will you believe? I'm believing the report of the Lord. Amen. I'm believing God don't make no junk. Yes, sir. Yes, I'm sir. believing God don't make no extra. I'm believing everything that he made was just not good, but the word says very yes, good. Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm believing I'm somebody. Yes, sir, Pastor. There will yes, never be another one like me. Yes, sir. And I'm not going to try to live my life trying to be like nobody else. How many know everybody else is taken? <laughs> so you might as well do you. But do you the way God created you to do you. Yes, sir. Not the way the world tries to do you. You've got a picture in your handout of a young lady who uh, I met at the Arboretum and she was sitting down and, and, and we had this nice conversation and, and she was sharing about her life, how uh, uh, she's a, a real estate broker and, and a young mother and, and, and her, her husband, uh, he works in a, a manual job. And, and, and the beautiful thing about this young girl, she was saying now, you know, because I got a young child and, and my career is booming, I, I did one thing, I made a decision. To, to cut off my hair. I was spending too much time at the beauty salon. Sometimes I was at the beauty salon for six hours and eight hours getting all of these hairdos done. And, 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 and then they wanted you to come back the next week and, and get your nails done and all of this stuff. And finally one day she said, I'm going to do me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And when she made the decision that she went to her husband and cut all of the hair out, she went and she looked before her husband and the first thing he did was kissed her on the forehead and gave her the biggest hug he could ever give her and said, thank you, I've been waiting for years for you to realize how beautiful you are. Yes, sir. That you don't need all that stuff. Yes, sir. I love you just the way you are. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I had a late appointment with the barber yesterday, and I, I had to tell this barber now I don't like to wait. Because when you go in a place where there's a barber shop and beauty shops in the same place, oh, yeah. sometimes you can't even breathe. <laughs> and I'm going like, dude, what is this smell in here? Well, these are the folks that's getting their nails done, and in order to, to do their nails, they got to put formaldehyde. You mean embalming fluid on your hands? Yeah, to kill the real nail so they can stamp the fake nail on top of the real nail and shave it down. And I'm going like, who in their right mind would kill something that's already growing or do I need to turn my back? I came with an amen already with me. And put something fake on there. When all you got to do is do you. And again, when you talk to most men who are married, if you try to say, ladies, you're doing it for your husband, you're not. Because most men going to tell you, baby, I love you just the way you are. Amen. You're spending six to eight hours every two weeks putting stuff on. When the man that loves you 
ain't going to just love the white part of the bread. How much though he going to love the crumbs too? <laughs> and that's what real love is all about. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And God is challenging all of us, not just women. I'll get to the men in a second to understand, y'all, that when you have a good name, praise God, it's, it's first of all, you receive that good name by honorable behavior. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And honorable behavior is when you trust God even when you can't trace God. When you make up your mind to say, God, you are the one person in my life that will never leave me nor forsake me. And I'm going to put my trust in you that where you guide, you're going to provide. Anybody believe that? Yes, sir. And I know some don't want to receive it. Yes, sir. Because, you know, instead of going less nowadays, we're getting more nowadays. Uh, uh, I was leaving that place yesterday, and, and a lady had so much hair in the basket. I said, what you going to do with all that? You, you're making the Lion King get jealous. <laughs> and God is saying it's time to draw the line in the sand and just embrace the beauty of who you are. I wish I had one witness in yes, here today. Yes, Embrace a business. Praise God. Look at the preacher. Yes, sir. Natural beauty. The same as every woman in here, God. Yes, sir. And the world has convinced us that, hey, in order to really be in style in the times we living in today, yes, sir. this is what it takes for you to do. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I would much rather spend eight hours studying the word of God eight hours doing something that's going to be healthy for my body. Praise God. I go to the gym and it's like, where are all the folks? We're in a season, y'all, to where uh, they're putting so much sugar into our food that, that, that many of us are, are struggling with things like diabetes and things of that nature. And God is saying the simple thing to do is to realize that your health is going to be a determinant of not only what you think. Anybody been thinking on the word of God? Anybody made up your mind to think about what God says? Paul says, think on these things. What's true, just, honest, pure, lovely, good report, virtuous, and praiseworthy. The good, the clean, the pure, the powerful, and the positive thoughts. What you say, the Bible says, as a man or woman, think it, so are they. The Bible says death and life is in the power of the tongue. Yes, and those who love it will eat the fruit of it. And we realize that we don't say anything with our mouth unless we want it to come true. Amen, lights? Amen. We speak life. And we need to speak sometime and get in the mirror and say, I am beautiful in God's sight. God loves me with an everlasting love. And he loves me just the way that I am. Sir. Yes, sir. I'm going to draw a line in the sand and not try to follow the world's plan. Start out with one pack of hair. Next thing you know, three packs of hair. Next thing you know, five packs of hair. And the Bible says, y'all, the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. Well, when we got folks who say they love the God but don't love themselves, enough to just be who God created him to be. God has a challenge with that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And he wants you to know how beautiful you already are. And the same with men. I see guys at the gym, y'all, and it ain't good enough to just go through the process of getting in shape. And if you know anything about getting in shape, it's easy to, to stay in shape than to get in shape. But if you ever get out of shape, you already know the first two days, three week you go to the gym, you're gonna be sore. Amen, lights? Amen. You already know that. But for some folks, the soreness is enough to get them to stop. Yes, sir. I ain't going back. You mean I gotta do the same thing over again next week or, or in two days? But that simple decision will make a big difference in your life. 
Oh, you may not tell the difference right away, but I guarantee you when it comes to doing the things you're supposed to do, if you stick with it and stay with it, Amen. it's going to make a big difference in the quality of your health. Yes, sir. My man told me one day, he went to the doctor and he did a stress test. And he said he was determined to go from awful to terrible. And as soon as he got to terrible, he got off that treadmill. And the doctor said to him, you'd be glad to know you're in great shape for a 72-year-old man. And Zig Ziglar said, but doctor, I'm only 42. <laughs> and he said the first day, he went out to jog. His wife got him some new jogging suits like a good wife would do if you're going to change your way of living. And he said, I, I jogged the whole block and I got tired. But he said the second day, I jogged a block in a mailbox. Yes, sir. And the third day, I jogged two blocks. Yes, sir. And then one day, a few years later, when he had got his weight down to a healthy size and he said, I was out there jogging. The birds were singing, the wind was blowing, and I'm feeling so much good because I'm not carrying all this luggage that I've been carrying. Yes, sir. And it came to me, I'm not paying the price for doing this. I'm enjoying the benefits. I'm just doing it's a beautiful journey. It's a beautiful journey. Oh, we went through COVID. And any of us pick up a little COVID five or 10 doing COVID, praise God. I remember some suits I'd put on like last year with this little suit. I tried to put it on and it's like, ah, oh, I'm gonna wait on that suit. <laughs> but after getting, doing the things I'm supposed to do, you get to a point to where you're not paying the price. You're enjoying the benefits. Amen. Amen, and I challenge everybody in here today that whatever God tells you to do spiritually, praise God, you don't pay the price for studying his words. You enjoy the benefits. Mentally, you don't pay the price by, 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 by keeping your mind stayed on the Lord. You enjoy the benefits physically. You don't pay the price for working out. You enjoy the benefits. You pay the price for not working out. Financially, you don't pay the price for paying your tithes. You enjoy the benefits. Yes, sir. Amen. Because you can't be God-giving. In a family, you don't pay the price for praying together and studying the word together with your family because a family, family that prays together does what? Stays together. You enjoy the benefits. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And God is challenging you today to buy yourself because he's already bought us. And everything that we need to live life more abundantly is in his word. He wants you. To look good, y'all. But when you read 1 Peter 3, it tells you what makes a woman special in God's sight. Somebody help me out. Did God say it's your hair? No. Didn't say your hair? No. What about the gold jewelry that you wear? No. What about the fine clothes that you wear? No. Didn't say any of those things. Somebody help me out, ladies. What did God say makes you special in God's sight? It's in your handout. Quiet, gentle spirit. Which is of great worth and great value in God's sight. And sometimes guys be saying, when ladies come home from eight hours at the beautician and they got a no-touch zone with the hair. <laughs> Would you touch my hair? Don't you touch my hair. I make love to you, but don't you touch my hair. It's like, what is more important, me or the hair? And I'm trying to laugh us into the reality of how the world will get us on a program. And if you ask your husband today, most men going to tell you, I love you just the way you are. Amen. Don't go changing trying to please me. I don't want to have to work that hard. Thank you, Barry White. <laughs> I love you just the way you are. Yes, sir. Because the real value of a man or a woman is not on the outside. It's on the inside. Give Scott praise if you can receive that. <laughs> Some of us, oh, I don't care what the pastor's saying. I'll be the Lion King. <laughs> 
And sometimes you see folks, y'all, and it's almost sad. When you ain't bought no house, you ain't even had no car. But you're going to go spend several hundred dollars on your hair. <laughs> I'm at a thrift store. No, this woman don't make, but minimum wage. And I'm going like, wow, what? I see you got your hair changed. See, yeah, I got it changed and had so many colors and I look like the rainbow. <laughs> I say, that's a pretty elaborate hairdo that you got. <laughs> How many hours did you take for her to do that? Eight hours. She said that proudly. Eight hours. And how much did you have to pay? And she quoted several hundred dollars. And I'm saying, baby, when you're making the type of money that you're making, that's probably a better use for your resources because the person that God has for you is going to love you just the way that you are. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And ladies who are godly women, we got to be bold enough to share with the younger women. Come on. Amen. We can do better. We don't have to continue following the world, thinking that what the world says is what makes you valuable in God's sight. Because it don't. And we have to learn that God knows what he's talking about. So how do we do what God wants us to do, y'all? The first focus with a good name, somebody say character. Character. Woo, if we would ever turn folks into focusing on character, the resolve to do what's right in God's sight, then we would be in a great situation in life. Praise God. Uh, I'm reminded again of the story of the, the couple who came back and, and, and they had been busy all week working. None of the parents had time to spend with the children. And the grace is saying you can spend with children is not money, it's time. They come home and, 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 and the man had promised to spend time with his son, but he had a report to get out. So he tore a picture of a magazine up and told his son to go put the world back together. Son went away crying, came back in 10 minutes, had put the world together. The dad said, how in the world did you put the world together so quickly? The little boy said it was easy, daddy. On the opposite side was a picture of a man and a woman. And when I put the man and the woman together, the world was together. And God wants to put us together. He wants us to enjoy our relationships. Yes, sir. He wants us to understand that when he created marriage, he created something to be so special that nothing single is supposed to be able to compare. Amen. Amen. Nothing when two people become one. Amen. Nothing when, when they got each other's back and they're not way back. Somebody trying to compete in a worldly standpoint. The Bible tells us in Genesis, when God came together, he said, let us make man yes, sir. in our own image. Ladies, how many snow? He didn't say, let us break man. <laughs> like a lot of people are trying to do today. Well, you know, all them folks thank you all that in a bag of chips, so it's my job to try to keep you humble. No, that ain't your job. That's God's job. You do your role and be a help meet. And God will keep the man humble. Because any good man already knows it's hard to stumble when you're humble. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because if you exalt yourself, God will humble you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Somebody say heart. 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 And again, I go back to what God told Samuel to remind David's father. People in the world look on the outside, but God looks on the heart. He looks on the inside, the acronym for heart. Somebody say honesty. honesty. Oh, when God sees a person that made up their mind to be an honest person, praise God. Uh, it, it's a blessing in his sight because a false weight is an abomination to God. Somebody say empathy. 
Empathy, when you find somebody that's not just concerned about themselves, me, myself, and I, but an empathetic person is going to seek to understand before trying to be understood. When they think, they're going to think not just about themselves, they're going to think about the family. Amen. Amen. They're going to be anointed. And that's when you've got something special, when you've got somebody that's got the power of God flowing in their life. And when we get with God and God takes us from all of me and none of God through some of me and some of God to all of God and none of me, we receive the anointing of God to where we're able to do the things that Jesus brought us to earth to do. You're able to pray and get prayers through. Amen. You're able to speak the word and not just circumstances. And people know that that's of great worth Amen. when you make up your mind yes, sir. Yes, sir. to have a good name in God's sight. Somebody say respect. Good. The Bible says the respect for God, the Greek would say the fear of the Lord is the beginning of all wisdom. And when you got somebody that respects God, you got something valuable. But we got folks in the day's time, y'all don't care what God said in his word. They're going to do what they want to do no matter what. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And the Bible reminds you and I that the lion has roared, who will not fear? Amen. When the Amen. sovereign God has spoken, who can but prophesy? How many of us know when God said it, it's already settled? That's it. That's it. Oh, it ain't just God said it, I believe it, and I said it. It was settled when God said it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And when we respect God's commandments and don't treat them as suggestions, we develop that good name that God is talking about. And finally, the T, somebody say, we trust God. We trust God and not man. Amen. The word says it's better to trust in God than to put confidence in man. That we are to trust God with all of our heart, lean not to our own understanding. In all of our ways, acknowledge him and let him direct our paths. And that's what God is challenging you today, to realize that you have a brand just like Louis Vuitton is a brand, yeah. just like Apple is a brand, Amen. just like Mercedes is a brand. But let me just go to this as I'm summarizing this today. Y'all, why will a person pay $1,000 for a Louis Vuitton? Because of the brand. Now again, you know, people have told us, oh, I, I, I have a friend that's got a $15,000 Rolex watch. And, and, and people say, why would you pay $15,000 for a watch? You know what he told me? He said, James, sometime I'm traveling with my family. And we go to third world countries. And they don't only let you take so much in the country. But when this Rolex is on my wrist, I can go anywhere in that country and get $12,000 for this $15,000 watch. Now in his mind, that's security for his family. And again, the only reason that that was sell for that much is because of the brand that they created. And God is telling you today that, that you are a child of God and you are the very best that there is in the world. Amen. And when you are the very best, how many us know you don't need to settle for less? Because you are a child of God. If you can receive it, give God praise today.